talking about all things Redlands, California, and then some. And up with me now is the co-owner of Bernadini and Donovan Insurance, Adrian Donovan. Welcome to the show. Hey, Deborah. How are you? And Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. I lo- Do you like the ring? Are you... A lover of rain. Yeah, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, and I actually used to be a storm chaser in college. So I used to go out and, um, you know, tell people where, you know, the action was happening. So I love the change in the weather. I love the sunshine, too, but the rain is and the change is welcome. Oh, yeah, I I totally agree. Well, you, I was uh, letting everyone know that you have um, a copy of the bill that will replace Obamacare, which is pretty interesting. But before mm-hmm. we get into that, I would like to talk about some of the upcoming deadlines to finish out the open enrollment period. Yes. So um, January 31 is, is D-Day, so, so to speak, but I anticipate that they'll move the goalposts like they do every year to give people a little bit more time. Um, so if you want to have a policy now effective um, on um, February 1st, you need to have your submission in by January 15. And if you want your policy effective March 1st, you must have it in between the 16th and the 31st of January. It would not surprise me to see that extended to, you know, somewhere around the 15th of February. Uh, They seem to do that every year. So, um, you know, if you're making changes, you're you're needing to enroll in coverage for the first time, you're not sure whether you qualify for uh, tax credit subsidies in any way, shape, or form, by all means, um, reach out to our office and, and we can help you with that. Okay. I have a kind of a probably a silly question, but why mm-hmm. do the dates continue to be moved? Because it seems like they're always, like, this is the date, and then I hear that the date's been extended. Yeah, they're trying to capture more enrollment because Covered California is funded by every premium dollar that goes through it. And so they actually get paid more than I do, to be honest with you. Oh. For, so the way that it works is, is depending on the carrier, it's anywhere from 35 to 4% of every dollar that goes, to covered Calif- goes through Covered California is that's their revenue. That's their cut. So they're in, they're they're trying to extend deadlines to get more enrollment. So they're put you know putting more premium dollars through, so they increase their revenue. That's how okay. they stay in business. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, then there you go. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, Anything? And, and I try to steer people away from Covered California if they don't need to be in there. The only reason they should be in there is if uh, they qualify for tax subsidies. Otherwise, stay away. Yeah, stay away. Yeah, we've talked about that a number of times. Okay, any yep. anything else bef- um, that no, we need to know about upcoming? No, I think that's no? pretty much it from a, a deadline standpoint. Okay, and then anyone out there that has, in, if you have any question about uh, Covered California, you can call uh, Bernadine and Donovan's in, uh, office, and I'll yes. make sure that the number is posted and whatnot as well. Okay. But uh, you guys are really great at answering questions, so fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so so here we go with the big thing. <laughs> the big thing, so, and big it's big. Thing. Yeah. So I got a copy of the bill that's being proposed. It was written by a gentleman, congressman named Senator or uh, Congressman Phil Rowe, out of Tennessee, who is a medical doctor. So a doctor is actually writing the legislation. Um, that the goal is to repeal the Affordable Care Act and have it gone by January 1st, 2018. And that's what's stated in the bill. Um, now, if I can summarize, this is a lot of information here, but I'm gonna, I, I want to kind of give you a 30,000-foot you know, a view of this thing if I can. Mm-hmm. Um, and what it is is they are going to make some major changes to how health care is funded. Um, they really want to incentivize the use of health savings accounts. Uh, they want people to save money for, to, to cover health insurance expenses. They want to open up the markets to have more competition, more carriers competing for business. There are some pieces in here that talk about attacking various areas of health care costs, namely pharmaceutical companies and dealing with that as it is typically the biggest driver of health care costs. 
Right. Um, more people use medication than anything else when it comes to health care, and it's the most regularly consumed part of health care. Um, and so, um, but what they want to do is, ra- so what, what we're going to see is you're going to probably see Covered California go bye-bye, not exist anymore. What will take its place is a simple standard deduction for, per- for purchasing health insurance. And so if you're an individual and you buy a plan, you're, the proposed cap for the health insurance deduction, and this deduction is in addition to any other deductions you're eligible for, and that's what's being proposed. The individual cap will be up to $7,500 a year. You'll mm. be able to have a tax deduction for purchasing. Mm. And chances are you aren't going to spend $7,500 a year for a health insurance plan. Okay? Right. Most people, that's not gonna, it's not going to cost mm. that much. If you're a family, that cap goes up to 20500 Oh, wow. It's a big mm. deduction. Yeah, it's huge. Okay, it's huge. A fam- yep. what, what did you did you say family of four or just a or just, just a, a family? family structure? So uh, I'm I'm going to make the assumption because it doesn't spell it out. That oh, that okay, I be, that's what you said. Sorry, I, that okay. it would be it would be two or more. So husband okay. and husband and wife, you know, no kids, but I would I would say two or more is is what they're um, looking at. Um, in conjunction with the HSAs, the way that the HSA, and HS, when I use HSA, that's an acronym for health savings account. And a health savings account is a savings account that's attached to a qualified high deductible health plan that can either be an HMO or a PPO. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way, that the, H, the way that the IRS rules work right now, there are caps on, the, on what you can put into the HSA that have no relation to the deductible or out-of-pocket maximum on your health plan. They just set an amount. What they're wanting to do now is say, hey, the new rule is you can put in whatever the out-of-pocket maximum on your health plan is. And so if you buy a, if you buy a, a $10,000 deductible plan that has an out-of-pocket maximum of $15,000 because you just want to save money, you don't want to have an expensive insurance plan, what they're proposing is allowing you to fund your HSA with $15,000. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's... you'll be able... <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That is like, ta- okay. And that's also tax-free <laughs> money. Now... If you choose to buy an HSA and you fully fund the HSA, you will not be allowed to take the full deduction for purchasing the health insurance. Oh, okay. So it's going to be kind of one or the other. You see, okay. does that well, make sense? sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're yeah. Not, they're, there's not going to be a double dipping there. Either you'll get a deduction for the HSA or you'll get a deduction for purchasing the health insurance. But either way, yeah. they're both substantial deductions and you'll have to just see which one works in your favor which one is better yeah which is in your favor yeah Yeah, well i think that's fabulous okay great and so one of the big thing that's big things that's being discussed is pre-existing conditions people are concerned that they're going to drop that i think trump has been fairly straightforward in saying that that's something they're not going to get rid of but they're going to change how they fund it and what they're proposing is is um, block granting to the states high risk pool money where people with, and they'll, they're going to develop a list of, of, of conditions of people that will qualify to go into these pools where state money will help fund it and then the people that are a part of it based on income they'll have a sliding scale of premium that they'll be responsible for plus some cost sharing you know requirements as well. The people that are not part of a high-risk pool that don't have medical conditions will still be able to go out and purchase individual coverage or get coverage through their employer, but it will become less expensive because they're no longer paying for the sick people. Ah, right. Okay. Wow. Okay. Almost sounds too good to be true. (laughs) Well, these are things that have been discussed for a long time, but nobody's had the cojones to actually do anything about it. And. And so now, um, I really think that we're going to see it's going to it's going to be a drastic shift. But I don't think that anybody's going to be left out in the cold. And I'm a big fan of you know saving money. Oh, and I almost forgot. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. They're going to allow you to do. Yeah, they're going to allow parents to buy HSA qualified plans for their kids and fund the HSAs for their kids at any age. At any age. At any age, so you can wow. buy it when they're born, 
and okay. you can start funding it, and they can have it for life. Oh my! Well, that it sounds wonderful, but what are I mean? It's going to be repealed. I'm assuming, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Obamacare is going to go bye bye as we know it. It's going bye bye. There's okay. pretty much no uh, no doubt that that is that's going to happen. Okay. Okay. And it and if anybody wants a copy of this, I'm certainly willing to distribute it. Uh, it's about 184 pages. Uh, so it's not a lot of reading in comparison to what the Affordable Care Act was. Um, and so, I'm, you know, if anybody wants to email me or give us a call here, I can give my email out and uh, I can distribute it for, for people to read and, you know, chew on and see what okay. they think. What is your email address? My email address is Adrian. It's A-D-R-I-A-N at B-D Health Insurance. Dot com. And that's B, D, B as in boy, D as in David? Um, yes, yes, correct. Okay. And then health insurance okay. spelled and then, out. Okay. Okay. And we'll make sure to post that as well, especially for people who may be um, driving. But if you go to the uh, About Redlands website and, and type in Donovan uh, or even insurance, uh, Bernadine mm-hmm. and Donovan will pop right up. Um, also, I'm assuming to any of, it might be a little bit more difficult in Google, but I do know on the About Redlands site, you'll, you'll pop right up. And your phone number, if you could share that with us. Sure. Local number is 909-792-792. Five one zero zero, and our physical location. We're right across the street from what used to be uh, Pharaoh's Lost Kingdom here on on California and the Ten Freeway. So anybody can feel free to drop by anytime as well. Awesome. Okay, Adrian, thank you so very much. I appreciate that. Again, we'll post uh, your contact information for anybody that would like a copy of that. And thank you. Have a yes. You're have very, very welcome.